I'm going to make some uh, colloidal silver with Putin the cat, but this time I'm going to do it with um, fish tank bubbler. And just to agitate it up a little bit more, um, I know it's like if I put this in hot water and I put like a glass container in hot water and I boil the water and there's the containers inside hot water, basically it's moving the water around. Also, I'm going to do is put the fish tank bubbler in here. And just so I agitate the water, I'm going to keep these rods closer, and it should make it a lot faster, a lot cleaner, smaller particles too, but quicker instead of taking 24 hours to do this bullshit. So I got a little bit of high quality stuff down there in the bottom, and I figured that's good to get it going. It's always kind of good to have a little bit in there to get it going anyway. You know, you don't need to add anything, but if you start with a little bit, colloidal ionic silver whatever you want to call it <laughs> you know like some people argue one way or the other but they both work and actually when you make this stuff it's a combination of the two ingredients it's not really one or the other but keeping this agitated is the key to making the particle size smaller so I'm gonna make these rods a little bit closer together and it's got a little bit of silver in there already now this is one of these Bob Beck pulsers. I got a bunch of these damn things. It's got the silver maker in it. So when you turn it on, you see it's got the flash like that, red and green. That's if you're using the blood electrification side. If you turn it that way, you turn the switch the other way. It's this side, and you can see the amber light comes on a little bit. If you touch the rods together, it goes on really bright. So that's just a little bit of a resistor in there. Then we stick the fish tank bubbler thing in there. And uh, all you got to do is plug it in. It's, it's working. I don't know if you can hear it. But you kind of like, kind of hear it, put it against something. Hear it? If I put it against something, you hear it rattling. So, see the water? It's bubbling, man. So, that'll make it work a lot, lot quicker. <laughs> because it's being agitated. It's being agitated really quick, man. So... Now we got our parts per million meter and uh, we'll be checking that out, see how long this takes. This should take a lot less time because I get tired of waiting for this garbage. I used to like stir it up and I used to try to, the boiled water method works pretty good. You put it in, you take a pot of water that's close to boiling and you take a metal container like something like this, a, la a glass lined lit metal container like this, I was making it with this and you put that in a pot of water and it agitates it up and you get a nice clear solution of colloidal ionic actually they're both, it's a mixture you don't get 100% one way or the other even when you make this ionic silver people say it's no good there's advantages to both of them how's that? and what you really get is a combination but the fish tank bubbler is the way to go and I'm not going to turn on the ozone machine but uh, I'm going to have some more tricks up my sleeve. You're going to see what the hell i got coming up here later on. I'm going to get the uh, hydrogen-oxygen splitter for the HHO. And I'm going to make my own pure oxygen for ozonation. For ozonation. We'll see how that works out too, man. we got some tricks up our sleeve and uh, ingenuity is the watchword. So, anyway, you know how much these fish tank bubblers cost? Ten bucks. That's all they are, man. And this is uh, Putin the cat's food over here, man. So, you know, we just, he's part of the family, man. So, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Let me put it to this way. <laughs> he's right here, see? He's hanging out in his big lounge chair, his windowsill, his other thing. And he's watching out for when the little Goldie comes by to eat his food, right? Anyway. So, it won't take long. I'll see how long that takes. And like I said, I started making it that colloidal silver with a little bit of colloidal silver solution in there ahead of time so that's a good way to jump start it. You don't want to put no citric acid or salt or none of that bullshit in there. You want to actually start with just a little bit of colloidal silver. That jump starts it a lot faster. And then use 100% still distilled water, 49 silver and all that type of stuff and that's it. That's it. Well this is by far the fastest I ever made colloidal silver. I never tried this method with a a bubbler. I'm gonna do this from now on. It's uh, 
Come on. It's around seven or eight. It's showing seven now. Sometimes it's showing. Here it is, eight. And usually I stop at around seven because I figure six is good enough or six or seven is good enough. And, you know, I go a little bit over that. Actually, five is good enough. So I'm going to stop it. It hasn't even been running that long. I don't know, 45 minutes. This big container. I had a little bit of colloidal silver on the bottom, but maybe about that much, that much, just to get it going. So, this is definitely how I'm going to do this stuff in the future because this, this was nothing, and it looks like a pretty damn clear solution because when you're showing it against the white, it looks clear. You know, you can tell. You can tell, man. Actually, let me see if we uh, put a light in here. Looks pretty clear to me, man. So, anyway, it's pretty clear. So, anyway, should be fairly small particle size. Well, I'm done with this puppy. So, that's quick. I'm like, holy shit. Anyway, that was so fast.